today's video is going to be for anyone. Even if you've never done any sort of wiring before in your life, you should still be able to confidently and safely do this project. Now, why would you have a dash cam that runs only when the engine is running? Wouldn't it be much better if you could have it running continuously 24 seven so that even when your van is parked in your driveway, let's say, it's still recording. It's still providing you security footage of what's happening uh, around your home. Hi, thanks for joining me in my channel. I don't want this video to be one of those where it looks very easy on the video, but when you actually got stuck into it, you've encountered problems. Basically, the project is five steps and it begins with preparation. So, you know, enjoy your project, have fun with it. Make sure you've got everything you need. Uh, step two will be the removal of your overhead light unit here. It'll involve taking out the cover of your fuse box. If you don't know where your fuse box is, you'll need to locate your fuse box, remove the cover. The third step would be to identify a continuous 12 volt power supply. So you may need to refer to a manual or I'll show you other ways of doing that. And the step after that will be to make the actual connections. And don't worry, you can do all of that with, uh, with no soldering and with, with little tools I'll share with you. Uh, makes the job really, really simple. So once you run the cable, um, you want to also hide the cable and finally test it. Make sure that it's all working before you put everything back together. So five simple steps and an hour to do provided you've got everything and you're prepared. Maybe I should start off with this thing here. So this is a way of providing USB power by connecting it to your battery. You've got a red cable and a black cable to connect this to your battery. And a little bit of music. Um, USB ports like this provide five volts of power and most dash cams, most dash cams you buy, that you purchase these days come with a USB charging port or power, power cable. And so that's gonna be clicking into here. So you want this so that you can hide this up here in the overhead light unit. Now, about two years ago, I did a video on how to do this. But the trouble was that when you switch off your engine, power supply here gets cut off as well because you know, you, the, the, the manufacturer of your van doesn't want you to leave your lights on, leave the car parked and drain out all the power in your car. So with a lot of camper vans and motorhomes these days, uh, we've got solar panels. So that means whenever the sun's up, your batteries are being charged. So potentially uh, you've got unlimited power, but truly the amount of power that a dash cam uses is so small that even if you didn't have solar panels or even if your solar panels weren't connected to your engine battery, you know, they're only connected to your house battery, I think the drainage would be so low you could safely do this. But I do have other videos on how you can attach solar panels to your van, how you can connect your charge trickle to your engine battery. So that's why I decided to make a video this time around to show you how you can have continuous power to your dash cam. You'll need a bit of cable, about two or three meters, power cable, red power cable. You'll need one of these piggyback adapters. These are really cool. With one of these, you can plug this into your fuse box, right? And get power without having to do any complicated wiring. And it's safe because it's a fuse supply. The piggyback works with these fuses that will get clicked in. So it gets two fuses, one fuse for the original uh, device that uh, this particular part of the fuse box was supplying. And a second fuse is for the thing that you're adding on, the dash cam in this instance, which uses really, really low voltage. So you just get the lowest amount of um, amperage fuse to protect your circuit. Now, here's where you can get things done safely. While you do all of your connections, make sure you don't plug this into the fuse box. You only plug this back into the fuse box last of all. So if you have made a mistake, all that will happen is your fuse will blow up, no damage, no fire, nothing serious like that. And be sure you get the right size because when it comes to cars, there are two sizes of fuses. These are the older style large fuses. You'll need a basic thing to cut cable with, right? So this is a wire cutter. 
you just cut it off. You'll need a way of stripping the end of a cable like this. So get yourself one of these things and uh, you see how easy that is. You get some bare exposed cable. And so how are you gonna make a connection? You just flip this open of your easy connector, flip it open, insert your cable and just put it back in. And now it, you've got a secure connection. And so uh, if you now wanted to connect this end to your uh, USB power supply, you just lift up the other end of it. It's that simple, folks, that simple. Uh, you may want to get yourself some of these upholstery thingies. Um, these are just bits of plastic. You don't really need to get it. And it makes the job of hiding cables easier. You know, have a good time with this. So make sure you've got, time, you've got the time to do the project. Make sure that if it's dark, you've got adequate lighting. You've got your favorite coffee or your cup of tea ready. And simple things, little things like having a little bowl to put the screws in as you take them out, very useful. Have your phone handy with you so you can take photographs as you go along to remove the overhead light unit in the Ducato is very simple. You just use a flathead screwdriver, you insert it. You'll see two little marks over there. You press it in and you just squeeze out and the, and the uh, light unit drops off, but it'll still be connected by cable. And so to remove the uh, cabling from that, it's very simple. Again, you use a, uh, a screwdriver and you press down on the locking, the plastic locking click thingy that that's there and you just, um, press it open and you disconnect the entire um, overhead light unit. Having done so, in my case, I, because it was so easy, I also went on to remove the housing itself, which, which, which is a really simple matter of using a, a crosshead screwdriver and removing two screws. And that just give, gives us, gave me a lot of room so that I could easily um, put away, uh, hide away the USB power supply. Step three would be to identify your power source. Uh, in the Ducato, I looked up the manual and I was able to find out which power supply was running continuously. Now, if you, if you don't have your owner's manual or you don't, you're not sure, then it's just a simple matter of using a voltmeter uh, to remove the fuse, put one end, the positive end of the voltmeter into the fuse, the negative, part touches any metal part of your van that's a negative part of your to that connects to the negative part of your negative terminal of your battery and it should show a voltage of approximately between 12 to 13 volts and all you want to do is make sure it runs even with the ignition key removed from the car that's all you need to do once you've identified a continuous 12 volt power supply that's going to be your power supply that's going to be where the piggyback will click into. So now um, you are ready for the next step and that would be to make your connections. So once again, very, very simple. So if you've uh, received your piggyback like this, um, I would just, I would just, I would just clip this off right here. I would just clip this off. I would do the crimping as I showed you earlier and connect it using one of these easy connectors. And then the other end will be connected to your cable, right? And uh, before you do that though, run your cable between the fuse box area along here until it pops out through this way. It's very easy to do, it just take you a minute. Now, having done that, then you would connect it here uh, using the easy connectors to your USB power supply. And then uh, once you have your USB power supply, then you would run the cable coming from your dash cam Again, you'd run that through inside, make your connection. And so now you've got everything connected. And last of all, plug in your connection there with your fuse connected, and you should see the lights of your dash cam coming on continuously if, without your ignition on. And then it's just a matter of putting everything back together and that's your project all done. So thank you very much for watching. I, I'm sincerely interested in uh, making this channel a success. So please do rem remember, why don't you do it right now to click like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.